Ever wondered how solving a math problem could make you a millionaire? Well, today, I'm diving into the fascinating world of the Millennium Prize problems. These are seven super tricky math problems, each worth a whopping $1 million to the first person who cracks them. First up, we have the Birch and Swinerton Dyer conjecture. Next, the Hodge conjecture. The third problem is Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness. Next problem is the P versus NP problem. Fifth on the list is the Riemann hypothesis. Then we have Young Mill's existence and mass gap. Lastly, the Poincaré conjecture. We will jump deep into each of the problem. Stay with us and do subscribe the channel. First, we jump into the one millennium prize problem that has been solved, the Poincaré conjecture. In the field of geometric topology, a two-dimensional sphere is characterized by the fact that it is the only closed and simply connected two-dimensional surface. But what about three-dimensional shapes? In 1904, Henri Poincaré posed a fascinating question. Does an analogous statement hold true for three-dimensional shapes? This question became known as the Poincaré conjecture. The precise formulation states, any three-dimensional topological manifold which is closed and simply connected must be homeomorphic to the three-sphere. While usually stated in this form, it was discovered in the 1950s that it could also be posed in the context of smooth manifolds and diffeomorphisms. A proof of this conjecture, along with the more comprehensive geometrization conjecture, was finally provided by Grigory Perelman in 2002 and 2003. Perelman's solution completed Richard Hamilton's program for the solution of the geometrization conjecture, a program that Hamilton had developed over the prior 20 years. Hamilton and Perelman's work revolved around Hamilton's Ricci flow, a complex system of partial differential equations defined in the field of Riemannian geometry. For his contributions to the theory of Ricci flow, Perelman was awarded the Fields Medal in 2006 but declined to accept the prize. Then, on March 18, 2010, for his groundbreaking proof of the Poincaré conjecture, Perlman was awarded the Millennium Prize. Yet again, he declined the award and the associated prize money, humbly stating that Hamilton's contribution was no less than his own. Now we have the unsolved Birch and Swinerton Dyer conjecture. This conjecture lies at the heart of number theory, a field that delves into the properties and relationships of numbers, particularly integers. Formulated in the early 1960s by British mathematicians Brian Birch and Peter Swinerton Dyer, the conjecture provides a deep insight into the nature of rational solutions to elliptic curves. Elliptic curves are smooth, projective algebraic curves of genus 1, with a specified point defined over the field of rational numbers. The Birch and Swinerton Dyer conjecture suggests that there is a profound relationship between the number of rational points on an elliptic curve and the behavior of an associated L function at a specific point. In simpler terms, the conjecture posits that if the L function of an elliptic curve is zero at a particular point, the curve has an infinite number of rational points. Conversely, if the L function is non-zero, the curve has only a finite number of rational points. Boo. The Hodge conjecture is another one in the seven millennium prize problems in mathematics. It is a major unsolved problem in the field of algebraic geometry. The conjecture concerns the relationship between the algebraic cycles on a non-singular projective algebraic variety and the cohomology classes of the variety. In simpler terms, it deals with the ways in which certain geometric shapes can be described using algebraic equations. Despite significant progress in understanding the conjecture, a complete proof remains elusive. The Navier-Stokes equations describe the motion of fluids and are one of the pillars of fluid mechanics. However, despite their importance in science and engineering, our theoretical understanding of their solutions remains incomplete. For the three-dimensional system of equations, and given certain initial conditions, mathematicians have not yet proven that smooth solutions always exist. This is known as the Navier-Stokes existence and smoothness problem. The challenge, particularly for an incompressible fluid, is to prove either that smooth, globally defined solutions exist that meet specific conditions, or that such solutions do not always exist and the equations break down. The official statement of this problem was articulated by Charles Pfefferman. As we continue our exploration of the Millennium Prize problems, 
we arrive at another consequential question, which is the P versus NP problem. The core of this problem is deceptively simple. It asks whether every problem for which a solution can be quickly verified by a computer can also be quickly solved by a computer. This distinction is represented by two classes of problems, P, which are problems that can be solved quickly, and NP, which are problems for which a given solution can be quickly verified. One common example of an NP problem that is not known to be in P is the Boolean satisfiability problem. Given a complex logical expression, the challenge is to determine whether there is some assignment of true and false values to its variables that makes the entire expression true. As we continue our journey through the enigmatic world of the Millennium Prize problems, we arrive at one of the most famous and perplexing challenges in mathematics. The Riemann Hypothesis the Riemann zeta function, denoted as zeta s, is a function whose arguments may be any complex number other than one and whose values are also complex. Its analytical continuation has zeros at the negative even integers. That is, zeta s equals zero when s is one of negative two, negative four, and so on. These are known as its trivial zeros. However, the negative even integers are not the only values for which the zeta function is zero. The other ones are called non-trivial zeros. The Riemann hypothesis is concerned with the locations of these non-trivial zeros and states that the real part of every non-trivial zero of the Riemann zeta function is one over two. In simpler terms, the Riemann hypothesis asserts that all non-trivial zeros of the analytical continuation of the Riemann zeta function have a real part of 1 by 2. This problem was first posed by Bernhard Riemann in 1860 and has since captured the imagination of mathematicians around the world. As we continue our exploration of the Millennium Prize problems, we now turn our attention to the young Mill's existence and mass gap. In quantum field theory, the mass gap is the difference in energy between the vacuum and the next lowest energy state. The energy of the vacuum is zero by definition. And assuming that all energy states can be thought of as particles in plane waves, the mass gap is the mass of the lightest particle. The theory is a generalization of the Maxwell theory of electromagnetism, where the chromoelectromagnetic field itself carries charge. As a classical field theory, it has solutions which travel at the speed of light so that its quantum version should describe massless particles, known as gluons. However, the postulated phenomenon of color confinement permits only bound states of gluons, forming massive particles. This is the mass gap. Another aspect of confinement is asymptotic freedom, which makes it conceivable that quantum Young-Mills theory exists without restriction to low energy scales. The problem is to establish rigorously the existence of the quantum Young-Mills theory and a mass gap. In conclusion, the Millennium Prize. Problems represent some of the most challenging and intriguing questions in mathematics. Solving any one of these problems would not only bring great prestige, but also a million-dollar prize. But beyond the accolades and financial reward, the true impact of solving these mathematical enigmas lies in the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the universe.